Like how I got signed to and got my opportunity to actually play is uh, my agent lived across the street from the Patriots facility, right? Mm -hmm. So he's, he's, yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> this guy, hey, he, he was working. 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 He was He lived right across the street from the stadium. Yeah. yeah. I said, right. oh, okay. Right. <laughs> but um, he's at practice. An old lineman goes down. Another one goes down. And he's there. He, and he's literally like, oh, at the, after practice, like they're doing press conference. Like, hey, I got a guy who'll be on the flight here tomorrow if you need him. Mm. And he's like, all right, we'll get him here, right? Mm. And I'm somewhere down here, South Central, kicking it with the homie. And he's like, hey, can you get on the flight in an hour and a half? I'm like, I guess that's what we're doing. <laughs> no clothes, no nothing. Go get on the flight, get there, and, uh, you know, do the whole workout. They ended up signing me. But, like, that was the seminal moment of my yeah. career that right. gave me the ability to be able to play. And and make some money for my family, right? Was my agent was at the practice, dudes get hurt and he had the right. nuts to stand up right there and be like, nah, I got some crazy as fuck. Yeah, Every right, the fans, yeah. they like, I, I got an old lineman for you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, we are here, following the breadcrumbs again, with uh, TJ Ward, Super Bowl champion. Matter of fact, <laughs> college walk on, <laughs> right? Yeah, Earned right. a scholarship. Second round draft pick, Super Bowl champion, all pro, CEO now. Yes, CEO, player above sports, the agency, man, sports group. It's been an um, amazing one year starting this business, man. Mm -hmm. I've learned a lot. I'm still learning. Um, it's just been a beautiful process. I mean, Bobby and getting our, our, our kids, letting the grown, young men, grown men, um, to where they can maximize their full potential. Absolutely. So that's the that's that's our motto, a player above sports. And co-founder Bobby Carswell, um, one of my right hand men who went through the whole agent um, management process with me for the past 10 years, past decade, even before that in college. I've been working in the business just about 10 years. Um, we work for other people. He, he's also been represented by other people. We kind of use his experience as a player my experience is working in the business, the good, the bad, the great. Um, and we put it all together. At the end of the day, I don't think anyone has the better experience than hands-on experience than us. Yeah. So we put that together, and then here we are, man. We got some clients. Um, we're going to lead these young men and trying to kind of show them the way that we seem fit. I'm into it. What made you, TJ, want to get into kind of the agency side of it and kind of like uh, what were some of the things maybe that you saw missing? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like just just hit me with it. Me Man, that. honestly, if you would have asked me when I was playing or before I was playing what I was going to do when I retired, it wouldn't have been this for right. sure. Like, <laughs> right. It would not have been this. Right. Um, but th why though? So is why? it just so different from what your normal. Your I normal just didn't is? really have a passion for for mm -hmm. I guess represent representation to mm -hmm. I got later in my career and I realized how important it is. Right. Like you can be as good as you want to be as an athlete, but you still need a support system. You need somebody mm -hmm. working for you. You need somebody guiding and, and directing you in the right, you know, on the right path. Right. And it's a lot of agents out here. It's a mm -hmm. lot of players and they are underserved. I think mm -hmm. it's an underserved business for sure. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of guys are just cashing checks, getting guys, and they're not really and it's not their fault all the time because, like I said, when we were talking before camera, they haven't been through it. They haven't mm -hmm. experienced it. They haven't been in a training room. They haven't been in the meeting. They don't know how to interact with a coach on a daily. They don't know how to interact with a GM on a daily. Mm -hmm. You know, you can be, you know, uh, have all the degrees, and but, you know, life is about experiences 100%. and going through things. And I feel, you know, as a player, I had... Um, could have had a, a better representation at times. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If I was to do it, I would have did it this way, or I would have helped my athlete this mm -hmm. way. And I just want to do that now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's really what it's about. It's doing that now, so guys don't have to have the little hiccups or um, concerns. Or I kind of, I have an empathy for what they're going through or, or, or how they're thinking, mm -hmm. or you know, the next process. So uh, that's what I just want to give to these young cats, man. Right. Yeah, that guidance is invaluable. Just our experience, me going through the agency process, learning, um, you being kind of my right-hand man, dealing with a lot of these things and going to you and meeting new agents and trying to figure out, you know, what is the most important things. Talk about, like, the open lines of communication you want to have with your guys. 
with the coaches, with the scouts, and how that could be like an advantage versus, like you were saying, the guy with all the degrees and all the, uh, you know, business school recognition, but if you don't have the experience, how can that serve a little bit better? Yeah, I think that's big. I think, but it's on both sides. It's not just the player. It's not just the agent. Um, everything doesn't work for everybody. So you might have a guy that's the first round pick. It's going to be a lot easier. You right. know what I mean? It's going to be a lot easier than the guy that you have to actually work for. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I think on the agency standpoint, your agent, if you got a first round pick, you know, it's only so much I can do because yeah. he's already marketed mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But you might have a guy who has talent that will play in that league and is, is talented enough to play in the league. We just might have to do a little more work. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that comes with that hands-on. Mm -hmm. And it's not a cookie-cutter situation where, hey, I got a first-round pick. I'm going to put you in this deal. Right. I'm going to, you know, have you do this and work out here. This guy might need to get in front of a lot more people. I got to be more hands-on. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's the biggest thing because I've seen – Talent, you know what I mean? Like, I got a guy that no eyes are on him, but he has the talent just as well as the guy that has all the eyes on him. 100%. How do I get this guy to be looked at like this guy? Mm -hmm. It's probably on me a little bit, you know Absolutely. what I mean? It's on yeah, both of us. Sure. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. you got to work a little harder, mm -hmm. but I got to work a little harder as well. Mm -hmm. And so you feel bad for the guys that is like, okay, well, dang, he's pretty good. He can play like this guy, but nobody's looking at it that way. What do I do? Right. So now I got to wake up every day and hit these teams. I got to bother you. Mm -hmm. I got to make sure that my guy is working harder. I got to mm -hmm. make sure he's doing the things that, hey, I know you're looking at this guy. You think you're better than him and he mm -hmm. ain't doing as much as you, but you got to do way more because the eyes ain't on you. Right. So I think that in the representation side and what is, is driving us is that, man, some of these guys are getting overlooked mm -hmm. and some of these Agencies don't care enough to make sure the guys that are being overlooked are getting looked at as much. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, it's a paycheck, right? right. So, so the so league, so the league is made up of like fifty percent undrafted players. I was yeah. like almost like ten minutes from being undrafted. You I were was undrafted. undrafted. Yep. So when you think about your representation, was there anything that you felt like this person doesn't understand or they don't get? So they're just not. They can't help you as much. Well, to me, it was just like there weren't that many people knocking and calling, right? right like when right. I was uh, coming out, man, I had there was one guy who was super shady, right? That I just really didn't want to fuck with, but like he was kind of my only vibe. And then the agent that I ended up signing with hits me late in the process, and he ended up uh, Cam Colvin actually <laughs> introduced me to him, right? And I'm like, oh, Cam about to throw me on this mission, and it's gonna be weird, but I go. And I meet the dude, and he was a good dude. He came out, flew all the way out to Eugene, met me, sat down. Like James came to the meeting with okay. me, and um, you know he was he was the only guy that wasn't shady and that I could rock with. And so uh, through that whole process, though, I learned just like how hard it is. And I can only imagine now these days too. It's like like if you have a first round guy, you're not even really negotiating contracts at this point because it's sloppy. So it's yeah. like th those guys really aren't doing right. anything at this point, right? Yeah. Which is kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, that was just my my process with it. It was like there's no one knocking, there's nobody calling, and uh, I was blessed enough to get a guy who I ended up staying around with for long enough that was that was committed, did the work. How I got signed to and got my opportunity to actually play is. Uh, my agent lived across the street from the Patriots facility, right? So he's, he's, yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> this guy, he, he was, was working. He was working. He was he working. He probably lived next to Pat, right? Yeah. right. Bro, right. Pat, <laughs> bro, I went to Pat right? House and Bud, he lived right across the street from the stadium. Yeah, yeah. I said, right. oh, okay. Right. <laughs> but um, he's at practice, an old lineman goes down, another one goes down, and he's there, He and he's literally like, oh, at the, after practice, like they're doing press conference, like, hey, I got a guy who'll be on the flight here tomorrow if you need him. Mm. And he's like, all right, we'll get him here, right? Mm. And I'm somewhere down here, South Central, kicking it with the homie. And he like, hey, can you get on the flight in an hour and a half? I'm like, I guess that's what we're doing. <laughs> no clothes, no nothing. Go get on the flight, get there, and, uh, you know, do the whole workout. They ended up signing me. But, like, that was the seminal moment of my yeah. career that right. gave me the ability to be able to play. And... And make some money for my family, right? Was my agent was at the practice, dudes get hurt, and he had the right. nuts to stand up right there and be like, nah, I got some crazy as fuck. Every right. the fans, they like, I, I got an old lineman for you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I got one for you. And it, and it, and but it, sometimes it might take that, though. You yeah. know what I mean? And you think that 
where you go by the steps of, oh, well, I got a guy, he's high. Man, listen, sometimes mm -hmm. it's going to take your agent stepping up and saying, hey, I'm going to do mm -hmm. the things that nobody else is going to do for my guy. Absolutely. And it's not that just because it's your guy. It's just, sometimes it takes that to get those eyes on these mm -hmm. players. You know, so many players. Everybody goes through the cracks. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Certain guys that probably shouldn't win the first and go on the fourth and then, well, how is he a fourth round pick? Because there's so many guys. Mm -hmm. Who's representing you? Who's standing on the table for you? That's what it mm -hmm. takes. It's about maximizing yeah. your player's potential. Yeah. In, in right. the aspect, that's you know, what it's about. Mm -hmm. Also, like from an from, from outside standpoint, I feel like it's beneficial on, like from the agency standpoint, to be able to push your guys, you know? Because at the end of the day, the more eyes you get on your guys, depending on where you take them, it's gonna just bring more eyes to your agency. Yeah. That trust, that bond mm -hmm. that you build for those those different types. Yeah, of but it's 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 bother. It's a bothering business, yeah. like you said. Your yeah, agent yeah. stood on the table for you at that point in time. Right. You're gonna have to be bothering. I'm not a natural naturally bothering person. Like you don't answer my phone call, I ain't gonna call you back. <laughs> yeah, you know right. what I'm saying? Like that's how I am. But doing it for our players, right. it's, it's not even it's more a natural. thought. It's yeah, just yeah, more yeah. natural. Like, yeah. yo, this is what I got to do. He don't answer, I'm going to hit him back. Uh -huh. And I'm going to email him. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to hit him again. Yeah. Like, And it, it's not even a second thought. And I like it because mm -hmm. it's getting me out of, outside of like my natural you know, attitude and personality. Right. Right. But... Cause it's, you you you've been the man you you yeah you was the man, been the man you've been the man in college <laughs> man, no, 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 sure. no you know what you know and that's good that you said that is because and and I'm gonna use him he probably should be talking about this but I'm gonna talk about this mm -hmm. so at the end of the day when we talk about this business and what we built it for when we sit down with these players and their parents and stuff like mm -hmm. that we want to let them understand that nah it ain't been the man. Right. Because TJ actually didn't get a scholarship out of high school. Big yeah. facts, though. That's he had fact. to go to a junior college right out of high school because yep. he got hurt. Yep. Then he had to walk on to Oregon. Oregon. You yeah. know what I mean? So when you talk about, you know, you guys have been scholarship players. Mm -hmm. Who's the lowest on the totem pole? Yeah. The, the walk-ons, walk right? Yeah. TJ was a walk-on, mm -hmm. had to earn his way to now get a scholarship. Mm -hmm. yeah. But then had to earn your way. So, you know, once you got to give a walk-on a scholarship, you're just going to be on the team right yeah. now. He want to play. Mm -hmm. He had to work his way to getting on that field. Mm -hmm. Then to work his way to be the all whatever he's going to be. Then to get drafted mm -hmm. and do all that. So what we're trying to sell people is, is that we've dealt with the top. Mm -hmm. We've dealt with the bottom. We've mm -hmm. dealt with every aspect of this game that you can. Nobody's mm -hmm. faced things that we face. And that's why we think we can help these players the most. Because yeah. we, we've, we've dealt with every adversity that you're going to deal with sure. your mm -hmm. son most of the time we sit down with your son mm -hmm. he's probably a scholarship guy yeah. well our guy came from the mm -hmm. depths mm -hmm. right. worse than that mm -hmm. but we, we we push through that and we're dealing mm -hmm. with things that you're going to end up dealing with so mm -hmm. that's the selling point as far as our ceo of our company and how we'll start from there mm -hmm. and let you know that we've dealt with everything i know it looks good he will super bowl champion mm -hmm. but listen he had to fight his way to get to that yeah, and i think your son will have a a little easier chance, especially with us, mm -hmm. we'll make that that transition a little better. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole the whole process. At some point, you're gonna get humbled, no matter what. Yeah, whether it's sure. the beginning yeah, no, or definitely. the end that's or somewhere in between. You're gonna get humbled. Um, so having that experience and being able to say that to a parent, can, do you bring that up? Do you say like, because a lot of these guys are probably being courted, like yeah, yeah. they're all world. They've never heard anything bad about themselves yeah. from right. damn near some of them, probably anybody. Mm -hmm. Right. Do y'all have the courage to go in there and be like, this is what we see that you could do once they start rocking with you or did you build that relationship? I think, um, you know, you, you, you don't want to be too abrupt, you know, with young guys, you know, just because, um, especially it, recruiting, yeah, recruiting them, them and so, but, you know, ass. you, you'll have some, you know, advice for them about their game or, mm -hmm. or whatnot, but for the most part, it's about motivating. Mm -hmm. So it's not about. You know, tell them what they not doing right or how they could do something better mm -hmm. yet. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's about, okay, this is what you do. Let's work off of this and get better with everything else. Mm -hmm. You know okay. what I'm saying? So that's kind of the mindset I take. Right. Or we take. Right. Uh, I guess since you guys started this thing, like, what is um, that agency landscape look like? Like, what is it like to start <laughs> one? Like, what's, yeah. what are some of those things that you need to be thinking about? Not just from the business side, but also like I, I'm going to serve this this player and these players, right? Like, what yeah. are you guys seeing that uh, well, you know, in regards to those? Well, we came from the combine. We were at the combine, and uh, you know, we seeing it from a little bit bro, of a it's different, a different perspective, because perspective, right? you know, you have every day everybody there in kind of pretty much the same building, right? Mm -hmm. So you got agents, scouts, coaches, GMs, and 
it's not many that look like us. Mm. And even worse, or not even worse, but even more obvious is our age. Like, right. yeah. you know, we're in our 30s. Mm -hmm. Right. So even I'm running into guys that I play with or coaches or, you know, front office and like, TJ, what are you doing? What are you doing here? Like, I'm an agent. Mm -hmm. Really? <laughs> TJ? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> You're a what? Yeah, uh, I'm trying to help these young bulls out, man. Get them, get them right. So, we just walking around, and I'm seeing like different groups of agents, and these guys, and the, the, the names you know, and from the sports world, and they representing. It's like we could do this. Mm -hmm. right. We could do this just as big or bigger than them mm -hmm. for sure. But I want to motivate. We want to motivate guys to get into this side because right. it's like for us as ex-players especially it's either you sit on your money mm -hmm. or you coach right mm -hmm. right right but where is the world why are we not on the representation side right yeah. especially in a, in a game in a sport that no one knows more about really yeah. than than you right on yeah. some level. and it's about a strategy like you getting four-year deal, two-year deal, whatever it is, it's about your agent strategizing the next few years for you. Mm -hmm. Like, what is the market looking like? Mm -hmm. What do you do good? And how am I going to sell you? Mm -hmm. And make sure your next contract is your best contract. You mm -hmm. feel me? And mm. Um, mm. I like that. That's pretty much it. Yeah, that's that's, it. that's yeah. one of the central themes of uh, the breadcrumbs. It's like um, betting on yourself, taking that chance, being inspired. Mm -hmm. um, so... Like, what were the spots that made y'all get the confidence to be like, we're going to better on ourselves yeah, and do it this way? Uh, I mean, I think more so, uh, just a little bit to take that back, I think more so we, we try to do this. Again, when you look around, there's not a lot of people that look like us that are doing this thing. Um, but at the same time, we want to make sure that everybody understands that, listen, Everybody who plays this, the majority of the pe play people that play this look like us, right? Yeah. Yeah. But you don't have to do this. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like at the end of the day, a lot of us do this because we're good at it mm -hmm. young. And mm -hmm. then how long can you go? Blah, right. blah, blah, right? Mm -hmm. If you look up, it's always a big issue of coaching, right? There's not enough black coaches mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And players, they'll fizzle out the league. And then one day they say, oh, he's a bust. Right. Well, he's not a bust. He you just he played the game for 20 years. Right. You know what I mean? Just happened to play from eight to whatever. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. Mm -hmm. So what we try to do is let these other players know that, listen, you're good at playing the game of football, but you can have a profession mm -hmm. that doesn't have to be on the field. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so we want to let everyone know that there's other avenues to take. Right. You know what I'm yeah. saying? There's other avenues to take to be around this game. There's Every time an agency comes to you, what do they say? Well, we want to get you ready for life after football. Yeah. Life right. after football? What are you talking about? I've been playing football for 20 years. What right. is life after football? I'm 18 years old when I go and go to college, right? right. You what, 22? When, when you when you get done, yeah. Man, listen, go to anywhere in the corporate America. Go ask somebody at 22 what they're going to do for the rest of their yeah. life. Yeah. Yeah. Right they don't know. Yeah, right, so bro. you mean yeah. to tell me that these kids are now 22 mm -hmm. going into pro mm -hmm. and you're going to get them ready for after football? Mm -hmm. Their peers and the people they went to college with don't even understand what they're going to do for the rest of their life until sure. 29. Right. 30 sometimes. Right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So then let's, yeah. let's take it like this. You're yeah. 21 years old. You make it to the pros. Mm -hmm. Let's say you have a successful pro career, mm -hmm. which they say is three and a half, four years. Mm -hmm. Let's say you have a seven-year career, mm -hmm. 28. Mm -hmm. So you're 28 and, and, and what? Done? Right. With life? Yeah. So, life. Life. Do. so now I'm this So now I'm this <laughs> agent that's going to sit down with you and your parents and say, hey, we're good because guess what? We're going to get you ready mm -hmm. for life after football. Mm -hmm. Well, how do you know what life after football is? 28 years old, I don't even know what I like. I don't even I've know been playing that. football yeah. since I was eight years old. Mm -hmm. How are you going to get me ready for something that I don't even know? Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is show you, look, look, individually, football. Our, our name is player above, right? And so the meaning of that is, is that we're going to put the player above anything. Mm -hmm. If the player isn't successful, mm -hmm. if the player isn't happy, mm -hmm. if the player isn't moving forward, mm -hmm. nothing matters. Right? Yeah. So we're player above everything. Mm -hmm. Now, 
you can't put a player in a cookie cutter situation. Hey, at life after football, we're gonna get you into real estate. Right. Yeah. I don't like real estate. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? Life after football, we're gonna get you into entertainment. Right. I can't act. Like, what does that even mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what you mean? Right? So how are you gonna get me ready for life after football when you don't know me? For sure. That's we hands on with our guys, man. Mm-hmm. We we look, we're gonna own in because we know us. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm with my peers are players. But look, even you know if you live, say you have a three year career. At 23, I'm done. I only play in the league three years, right? I'm unsuccessful, technically, right? I only played three years. At 26, I don't live my dreams. Yeah. Yeah. But half the time, you want to look at you like a failure because yeah. right. you ain't played 10 years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, what? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I've been on my own paying my family bills since 22. Right. Come on. You got kids living in your house right now. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's just big. And that's what we want to let everybody know that. The guys that we're recruiting, we're trying to let you know that, listen, this is an avenue. And and it really, because look, what they tell you is, when they talk about that life after football, they talk about financial you straight. You know what I mean? Like, so you're successful because you got money in the bank. Mm -hmm. Remember, we're not put on this earth to make a lot of money and have it sit in our banks. That's not what you're here for. We're here for your purpose. Mm -hmm. We're here for you. We're here for you finding out what you want to do. Mm -hmm. It's cats that, like I said, play football for 10, 15 years. I don't like football. I'm just good at it. I'm trying Mm -hmm. to make some money, make sure my my people is good. But when it's all said and done, they want to ask you, well, why is he depressed? He got money. Well, I hope he was successful. Why is he depressed? Because I never did what I actually wanted to do. Nobody actually asked me, hey, Mm-hmm. What do you like to do? Yeah. You know what I mean? That's why, I didn't, oh, well, Tom Brady came back because guess what? He ain't found he, what he want to do other than playing football and, and making yeah. time. That's you know what I mean? Know what do. You know what I mean? I played long enough. <laughs> this is the one thing I know I'm going to keep happy. I can't be away from it until I find out whatever else is going to make mm-hmm. me happy. Mm-hmm. And that's just what happens. So I think at the end of the day, when we talk about what we're doing and why we're doing is because we've been around people that look like us, mm-hmm. that have been through these situations, and we kind of know. Man, this ain't the end all tell all. We're good at this. You know right. what I'm saying? As, and from our culture, we're good at athletic mm-hmm. stuff and stuff like that. And they, they push us yeah. to that because we're good at we, it, yeah. right? Yeah. But at the end of the day, we want to find out individually, mm-hmm. not, you know, oh, you're, you, you, must, you must love football. Mm-hmm. You, you're black. You're good at it. No, <laughs> you know what I mean? Or if you don't, yeah. it's the yeah. biggest right. issue in the world. I don't, I don't know why you don't football. love the game. Well, I've been playing since I was eight years old. Right. I'm tired, I'm tired, tired of, of this it. motherfucker. Or my feet hurt. I'm tired of it. Right. We want to fit, fit, find out individually what our, our guys like. And it may right. be football. Right. And that's cool. And then we will get you into coaching and stuff like that. Right. But it may be I something like, else yeah. on the outside of it mm-hmm. that, that, that maybe has to do with football or just your network. This is your network at the end of the day. It's that. ways to deal with this other than worrying about coaching and waking up. Man, people tell you, I've I played football for 10 years. You want to tell me to go into coaching Man. and wake up and go to meetings and stuff? I'm tired. Of, I'm, I'm retired now. Right? I want to do something yeah, else. Yeah, yeah. What you got? So I think that at the end of the day, I'm... Not to get off subject, but man, just the purpose, man. We want to find individually what these guys' purpose is and how we can help them be mm-hmm. them mm-hmm. individually. Because mm-hmm. what the next guy is good for the next guy and good for everybody else. Yeah, yeah. You know, your experience is going to lead you to where you're supposed to be. I so like, agree with that. if I would have been playing right now with Mount still 50 years later, <laughs> <laughs> Mount been playing oh, 50 geez. years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I, I probably wouldn't be doing this, and I wouldn't be able to, you know put my wisdom on, on these guys, but you know, God has a plan for all of us and Absolutely. I'm a natural teacher. Like half the reason I'm not I didn't play long because I was teaching the guys the game and they right. didn't like that. Right. Right. I'm at the <laughs> I'm at lunch, I got ten rookies around me listening to me how the politics work. Yeah. You mm-hmm. think they want to hear that? No. 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 They sure don't. Mm-mm. We gotta get TJ out of here. <laughs> yeah, too, much yeah, too, too much game. Too much truth. Yeah. Yeah. Too much truth. So how are you guys feeling? This is what your first draft class coming in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel amazing, man. It's a it's a beautiful thing, man. Especially seeing these guys living their dreams and being able to help them. And you know, I like to think that we're gonna get them in a better position to get drafted or have um, great careers going forward than any other anybody else. You know, that's, that's why they signed with us. So. You know, I take pride in that for sure. That's awesome. I definitely awesome. could believe it. I don't think we had it. I didn't have any options. I didn't have many options for agents, period, coming out. Mm-hmm. But definitely no options of guys that had experience yeah. or could relate to me where I was at that age. Um, so I think, man. I think it's a scary thing, too, being, what, a 21, 20, 21, 22-year-old 20, kid, and you got 
an opportunity to be a part of, like we were talking about, one of the biggest, probably the second biggest company in the world, mm -hmm. right? You know, to, to have a job opportunity with them. And, you know, you, you don't have people that you can have, get genuine advice from that have the experience like you guys do have. Right. You know, like, but even that perception of I'm working for the biggest company in the world. Yeah. You think you're still playing football. Exactly. You're still playing football. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? We know you are your business. They always tell you that. And they tell us you, you know, you are your, um, like you're a corporation mm -hmm. as a person, right? Mm -hmm. But you guys are talking about how, like, you wish you had someone that would teach you a little bit more about the business yeah. side of things. Like, like yeah. Like, um, how do you feel like you guys, like, obviously, with the experience and everything, but how do you feel like you guys can penetrate it beyond just, like, what these big agencies are doing? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I wouldn't say bigger. Like at the end of the day, it, it ain't about what everyone else is doing. I think there's yeah. there's people that do a lot of good job. I actually, what I know is from the bigger agencies. Yeah, you right. know what I mean? So I don't want to say that they're not any good because I learned a lot from other yeah. agents. You know what I mean? I think that at the end of the day, I think that we just got to understand how powerful we are. Even, mm -hmm. even yeah. being younger on the business side, mm -hmm. I didn't know that the decisions that I made and it, or or just didn't understand that my network that I had, right. I looked at them as my peers. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I, I remember my cousin, he had an NBA player, and he was like, "Oh, y'all miss manager," and I laughed. I was like, "You're you a young black? Hey, you ain't no manager." You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I know you know you. why? Yeah, like, <laughs> know yeah, you. we kick it, we <laughs> hang out, you eat chicken every day. Like, you don't know, you ain't no manager. But the reason I felt that way is because naturally the agents look like this. You yeah. know what I mean? So how are you? You are, you are his boy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But then you look up and I'm hanging out with my friends and, hey, I need to book this flight or, hey, um, or I'll come, hey, I got to deal with so-and-so with you and blah, blah, blah. We doing what the managers are doing. Yeah, right. But we don't understand our power. And I think that flip side, that the, the athletes at that young age, you don't understand your power. Yeah. So I think that the older me is now looking at these younger guys like, man, you have all the power. Your your circle has mm -hmm. all the power. You know, they, they talk about, oh, well, he's spending money on an entourage and stuff like that. Really, if they if they put these guys in position and let them know their power, mm -hmm. y'all going to be more power than any company in the world, 100%. right? 100%. But we don't know that because there's not a lot of examples. So yeah. we yeah. switch that. Hey, listen, when you get done playing, you don't have to go into coaching. You don't have to sit on top of your money at the house and shut up. Yeah. You don't have to go be a GA to work your way up in the coaching business. You can stay right in this business and do whatever you want to do yeah. and give the power to your network and everything that you already built. Mm. So that's the difference between, like, when you look at the business-wise, I think that what we want to do is is let them know that we're already infiltrated in the business side. Yeah. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? The, as soon as that athlete gets signed... We're in. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Whether you know it or not. Yeah, whether you whether know, you know, know it or not. Exactly. It, we're now. Because yeah. guess what? When when my guys was playing, Malcolm know, like, mm -hmm. just, hey, this clothing company said they're going to give us free stuff. Yeah. And we just looking like, oh, we got a nice shirt. Yeah. Like, no, we got value. You know what I mean? They're going to pay us to come do 100%. the same thing we was going to do to pay. Right. Dang, they're about to pay us to have a table at the club. Right. Yeah. You know why? Because we got power. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I think that once we let all these young guys know, you'll switch it up. Yeah. And now... Everybody got to come. You got to come with some paper. Man, that's it. That's I think it's refreshing, too. Because I see them glow in other people's eyes. Like, just being at the combine. They see us. It's like, they're like, oh, okay, we got to get out. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It's yeah. a glow. Yeah. Like, I see all you. What you doing? I got an uh, <clears throat> agency. Cool. It's good to see some new faces. Because, you know, they got the same guys walking right. around every year. Right, yeah. right, right. Every year. The year to year, it's the same guys. Okay, these some new faces. Ex-player. Right. TJ. What are you doing? You're supposed to be sitting at home somewhere. Ain't you DJ, rich? you're supposed to be yeah. rich. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? Why do they try to give that, that persona like they just want you to stop living yeah. I don't get immediately? It. I don't get it. Stop pursuing. Uh, because they don't want us to really have wealth. Power. Real power, though. And when you keep working, when you got millions and you working towards more millions, yeah. the millions going to be billions. Yeah. yeah. Big facts. Yeah. They Big don't facts. want us to have billions. <laughs> yeah. They're trying their hardest. The so shield trying to save the shield. Though. They don't want to give everyone a little piece of it. Because I think mm. I think it's a beautiful thing what you guys are doing in the sense of... of of, of taking your experience and wanting to, like, my, my dad was always about, like, hey, I'm an old OG guy, all right? Mm -hmm. All I can do is give my wisdom out to the young folks below me, right? And all my wisdom is based off of my past experience. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's a beautiful thing because, like, sure, a lot of these cats, what, go, go get a business degree, go do all that stuff. But at the end of the day, like, that piece of paper is not going to be able to translate to what you guys already have walked, you know? Yeah. And, and so that's that's an awesome thing you guys got going right now. Yeah, man, that's, a, that's the greatest gift you could give somebody is wisdom, man. Mm -hmm. I feel like 
you give somebody game on what, I mean, you can't tell the future, you can't predict the future, but you, you could plan for, you know, life yeah. that somebody has already lived. You feel yeah, me? They sure. live this life. So, you it, know, it's it not rhymes. your life, but. Huh? Yeah. yeah, yeah. History rhymes, right? Exactly. Yeah. Right. Going back to kind of the process, right? You've been a part of the process, the draft process. Uh, you know, as a player, now going through it as an agent, you know, kind of like, what's the, some of the main differences? Like, what are you seeing in that? And, you know, how, how is it, I guess, on this side of the wall? You know? uh, it's, it's like, uh, <laughs> it's definitely a, a whole nother viewpoint because, you know, you're not preparing physically or anything for that. But right. it's like, um, just seeing what is expected, what, are, what GMs are looking for, what, you know, coaches are looking for, being able to talk to them. And just seeing guys that have grown in the business themselves. Mm -hmm. Like you come into a, a, um, a building, front office, you got guys that are going to get coffee for you. Right. Now they're coordinators. Right. Mm -hmm. you know? right. So just seeing their growth and having always had good relationships with people. Mm -hmm. Like I pride myself and my dad told me this is don't burn no bridges, keep good relationships. Even if you don't like them, for a, a certain amount of time, because right. it might come back and change right. in year two, five, or ten. So, it's just keeping those relationships <clears throat> for our players, not only myself, but for our players. And but on the on the athlete side of the combine, it was stressful as hell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh man, and, and it's very very stressful. You come in the indie, it's cold. You in a train station, you got to warm up in the hallway, or like, uh -huh. look, you got meetings all day, mm -hmm. you got guys want to talk to you, teams, you may not even have a schedule, they might call you an hour before, hey, can you come down to the to the lobby, right. I want to sit with you. Right. So, but as um, a representer, you see no athletes. At all. The whole time. Yeah. You don't see them, unless you're watching them on TV. Right. Like, you don't see any athletes, so it's, 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 it's kind of like two different worlds in one. Mm-hmm. I think that we did a really good job on picking the guys that we were working with now. And then we'll go out and, you know, recruit and try to get yeah. your biggest top guy yeah. and all that it's stuff. It's a process, like but you I, said. Yeah, I think that we wanted the, the first initial draft class to be guys that embody what we're, we're trying to put out right. as a business. Right. Um, say all that to say this, we got Vinny with us. Um, it's one of the guys that I think his story is it, it lines up so well with what we're doing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It, it lines up so well with our CEO, TJ, where TJ worked his way from top to bottom. He's been at the, you know, at, at, at the bottom of it, mm -hmm. you know, not, not taken away from it, but you know, it's the bottom totem pole 100%. to work on, walk on all the way up to a Super Bowl champion, all pro. Um, I think that this guy, he embodies that hard work. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And when I say the mindset and the physical, mm -hmm. I think he has the physical ability that anyone in the league has. Mm -hmm. And then when we talk about hard work, I'm not gonna lie. I don't. I don't know too many people that work hard as him. You okay. know what I mean. But uh, I'll let him more describe his story. But yeah, this is one of our clients. That he's gonna be in our first draft class. Vinny, Vinny welcome, McDonald. Man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, man. So a little bit about yourself, your story. Like, what's uh, you know some of that stuff that Bob was giving giving us the intro. You on look that. like you could play some basketball. So you how do. You, <laughs> how your foot? What's your football story? So. You know, coming out of high school, I was a three-sport athlete in high school, played football, basketball, baseball. Um, when I came out, I was a no-star recruit, undrafted. Mm -hmm. um, I had opportunities to go to Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, RPI for short, upstate New York. Mm -hmm. um, wasn't looking to go there to play football because no one really wanted me. I don't know. If they I was. One. <laughs> it's uh, like coming out. I wasn't really that top guy. You know, right. I was six foot three, buck seventy, mm -hmm. barely ran a five, flat forty. Like oh, yeah, I was tall, were. thin, slow, unathletic. Um, but RPI gave me a chance. I actually went there on a full academic scholarship. So what you I, study? Uh, so I ended, up, I ended up graduating with my industrial management engineering degree, and now I'm still there getting my master's Perfect. in business analytics. So. Anyway, I went, ended up going at RPI, and I just worked my way. Just worked and worked and worked, staying late after practice, coming early to practice, just grinding my way through with the courses, you know, going to RPI. is one of the top institutions in the country. Okay. The coursework is very rigorous. Waking up at 4.30, get ready for practice, go mm -hmm. three three classes throughout the day, have more practice, have more meetings. I probably ran on like four or five hours of sleep wow. each day, just kind of grinding through. Upstate New York, you know, the weather, 20, some practice about 15 degrees, yeah. cold, freezing, right. but... Just working my way through, I ended up playing as a freshman. I was only 17 years old, playing playing college um, in Division Three, And then just kind of worked my way, just consistently working, consistently working, consistently working, where I just came off of probably one of my better 
seasons I ever had of college in general. Um, played really well. And then stat I really, line. Go ahead, man. Yeah, hit us with the stat line. No, I played nine games. Well, we had 12 games. I only played in nine because I had suffered a significant injury that mm-hmm. kind of lingered on. But I know I played through it, um, which also pays tribute to just me just being having that grit, that Gutsy. durability. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I kind of played through. I had nine games, 600, 600 net, 660 yards, nine okay. touchdowns. So every Ooh, game we played in, I there scored. There we go. Tug game. Yeah. yeah. And then I ended, up, I ended up leading my team as two-time captain there we go, um, to the Elite Eight, which is pretty far in the playoffs for Division Three after coming off a 6-5 and five season and not playing because of COVID. Okay, so pretty right. much we went almost two years without any type of team organization. So literally just leading my guys, shoveling mm. the snow off the field, like, yo, guys, let's get some work. Right. Let's grind and leading Dang. them without the coaches being there mm-hmm. and sealing that character of championship mindset in everyone and kind of just leading the way through the good times and bad times. Like, literally, we have to hop on Zoom calls, just us, just running the meetings. Like, yo, this is the playbook. And That's then, what's up, you know, just kind of just taking that all the way through the season and you know it helped me develop a lot as a leader mm-hmm. on and off the field being able to work with 100 plus guys because we had 120 guys on our team mm-hmm. yeah. so having to work with that many kids that many guys of different backgrounds different cultures how things are done so yeah kind of in position now where i'm going to get my get my master's degree from a predominantly white institution so you know being me being a black man in that setting i'm mm-hmm. um, being around you know growing up i'm from new york city area mm-hmm. so i grew up around a lot of minority people mm-hmm. when they come into that environment it helped me understand like okay i have to change in xyz way i have to adapt to my environment mm-hmm. being being comfortable while being uncomfortable yeah, yeah, you know yeah. so that allowed for me to take my hard work my grit um my guttiness you know just me anyone from new york city everyone's got that hard everyone work everyone got that, that it's a hard chip work on that that. chip on their shoulder yeah. you know so like now I'm in a position now where, you know, I had a few scouts talk to me my junior year. I had a scout actually come to my practice my senior year. So I'm like, yo, like, I need to take this serious. Mm-hmm. So literally right after the season, like, we finished December 4th, that next weekend. From December to now, I've literally been training. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Training. I'm, I'm in grad school, so I'm taking five grad classes. I work mm-hmm. a part-time job, and I'm still trying to figure out time to train once or twice throughout the day. So like, I'm literally, Let's get I literally it. wake up at 6 a.m. almost every day. Mm-hmm. Sunday to Monday to Sunday, just getting out. Grinding. After, bro, grinding he, through he, it. He's, he, yeah. he's been and working then, his butt. you know, paying tribute to TJ and Bobby for having that belief in me. Because mm-hmm. I didn't really have that a lot. Mm-hmm. I always had to believe in myself. Right. But to have other people believe in you and see people in the position that you want to be in, mm-hmm. say, oh, you can play, it means a lot. But like... You know, being able to not get complacent, not mm-hmm. to let that get you say, mm-hmm. you know what, I haven't arrived there. Because like I said, you could be humbled at any time in the process. And me, I'm a humble person. I'm a humble, hungry. That's kind of like my mentality. So mm-hmm. just being able to consistently work no matter what. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 100, yeah. man. I like it. That's an interesting I like it. thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I could tell you a heady guy because you referred to your classes as coursework. So. <laughs> 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 you know, them shits yeah. was classes to me. So I love like, you. Yeah. <laughs> I got school. You know, <laughs> so I know you a heady so, young man. So, so, so really courses. Look. So now with this process, yeah. Um, how are you diving into kind of the football mode? Because I just know from my experience, it was like you could focus on a lot of stuff, but to be really special, you want to really focus in. Like, so how are you um, kind of shifting your mentality from going from school? Like once you graduate, once that time comes for you to shift, what will be your uh, outlook? All honestly, just, you know, once I graduate, just really devote my full time, 100% right. energy to this. Um, whatever opportunities arise, I have my pro day on the 22nd. So go there, just be me. Right. Ball out and do what I can and just really be ready for any opportunity. Um, my saying is no such thing as good luck in life. It's just one opportunity means preparation. Uh-huh. So you prepare mm-hmm. for whatever the opportunity comes. Like, for example, you just getting a phone call while you chill with your boys. Right. Or you never know when your opportunity arises. You just got to be prepared for the moment. So that's kind of just my mindset. Just like constantly it. preparing for it. Dang man, that, that, that's impressive. I'm looking. I'm looking forward to hearing how your pro day goes. Cause what's uh, what are you what are you uh, looking forward to do at the pro day? Like what's your, you know you got a forty time in mind or you know what I'm saying? What what are you pushing yourself to towards? Honestly, right. I'm trying to push myself towards being that flex tight end receiver kind. Yeah. Like, no out Kyle wide, Pitts. All that. Yeah, just out field. wide. But I could get in, I could put my hand in dirt and get in and gritty. That's just my. I got heart. Right. Like I was telling Bobby and TJ, like you can teach people how to bench press, but you can't teach yeah. them heart. For like, sure. I got that. So For if sure. you need me to go in there, do a chip block on the DN, I'll do whatever I can. For sure. But if you need me out wide to get open, I can get open too. So honestly, going to my pro day is just being me. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that I'm pretty strong up front, so I have you know certain things, certain numbers I want to hit. But ultimately, just do my best. Mm-hmm. Just go out there and just give everything I got. Mm-hmm. Leave no type of regret. Put my heart out there and just say, yo, I gave this 100% of my effort. Um, of course, there's certain numbers I want to hit. Like for my bench press, I want to at least hit 20. Right. For my 40, I want to hit a 4 or 5. Yep. Like, don't drop a single pass, 100%. no matter, even if it warms, don't drop a single pass. Yes. That's just kind of like what I have in mind, but 
ultimately just be me because that's what got me here in the first so place. So if you do drop a pass, then what? So you come out, then first pass, then in warm-ups. Drop the brick. That's what my mind says. Just drop the brick. You can't worry about what just happened. You got to keep on going forward. Right. That's I how it is in football. We just testing you. We just testing you. You definitely got that fight, man. You got that dog, and you talk about it being in the NFL and... You know, good teams have dogs, right? Yeah. You know, offensively or defensively. And I was telling Vinny about that fight back. It's something in good players, great players, it's a fight back. Mm -hmm. You get hit and you fighting I'm back. You or back. you got an attitude or mm -hmm. you upset or it's something. It's a yeah. fight back. And you see it, you know, you guys know yeah, what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. You be on the field with guys and they don't got that fight back. Like, bro, do like, something. Get like, like, <laughs> are you? I'll be looking at the side. Like, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know it's that fight back. And um, just through his preparation, his hard work, and you, you see it on the film, man. He, he just he's super competitive. You heard his 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 <laughs> vocabulary. He's super smart. He's gonna do everything he needs to do to be successful. And we're not even worried about that. We're just here to aid him, man. Make yeah. sure we give him everything he needs. You know, bring these guys up the right way and and, and show them the way. And if our guys can, you know, motivate us, it's even better. Yeah. Yeah. And he's one of the guys that motivates us to make sure that we wake up and do the work for him. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like at the end of the day, I think the more eyes that get on him and to see what kind of kid this is, like when they see this, you know what I mean? And see how he talks and the passion that he has, mm -hmm. it's going to make us 10 times better mm -hmm. as a whole. And then make him get to those opportunities that he's going to take advantage of. I actually, because we was in the lockout and I was working at USC mm -hmm. in the front, yeah. in the, in like the athletic services office, um, training and getting ready for pro day and then come, or not combine for draft, whenever we started training camp, because we had no off season. I didn't go to the combine. You know, so I had that one day to get ready for it. And it was like, um, I made all these plans in my mind to do all these things. And I ended up doing them and I did well, but <laughs> it's because of the consistent daily work that I had that expectation like you're doing now. So um, my experience was kind of similar. Not, I wasn't waking up at 4.30. I was still having a good time. I don't know if you're having a good time with it, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I was enjoying myself. But at the same time, it was like, you, these guys know how I've been. It's always been... Mm -hmm. yeah. This is the most important thing to me. Um, so, good luck to you, brother. Appreciate yeah. it. Appreciate it. Now, I can just tell from your from your vibe and your energy, like you're so committed to it, and that's what it's gonna take, right? It's gonna take them four thirty days, them six o'clock days. That, like TJ saying, somebody gonna try you every day, right? Mm -hmm. And it's gonna be about them. Do, are you gonna punch them back, or are you gonna, or is that gonna be the time when you just be like, oh, I'm gonna let it slide today because I'm tired, or you know what I'm saying? And that's the the that's the energy. The energy that you're bringing is the energy that the, that pros have, mm -hmm. right? They call it being a pros pro, right? And so it's like, uh, uh, it, like I play with the Cowboys a lot, and in that locker room, the highest thing that you could be was a pros pro, especially amongst the I'm an offensive line guy. So like, like we respect industriousness and work like a motherfucker, right? So it's like, mm -hmm. can you be a pros pro? And it sounds like you're gonna be a pros pro, and so you're gonna be solid. Just keep that shit, right? And you're gonna be alright. Appreciate you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that experience, um, going from the pro day and then becoming a professional and being wide-eyed at first. Mm -hmm. I don't know if y'all remember. I remember like the first workouts and I'm coming in, I'm seeing like Marshawn and I'm seeing mm -hmm. um, just guys I watched my whole mm -hmm. life playing on the mm -hmm. team. Like I had a dude when I got drafted, I knew there was a dude like I, I thought I was better than him. I, I looked at him and I seen him and I'm like, dang, okay. That's the guy I got to be better than. For, right. for me to get a job, he got to sure. lose a job. Or somebody mm -hmm. got to lose a job. Mm -hmm. So it was like, you have to accept that fact and go from being um, a fan to being like, okay, I need to prove my... I, first of all, I need to prove myself day one, and I need to command respect every day. That was mm -hmm. always my thing. I need to command respect when I walk in the weight room from the coaches, from the training staff. And it wasn't like... I got to bully somebody, yeah. but like, no, it's like, you got to respect the way I move, the way I work, the effort mm -hmm. that I put in, you know, it's not talk, it's real. I'm competing every step of the way. Mm -hmm. um, and being in Seattle, that was kind of where the whole team was built. It was about a bunch of guys looking for respect. You know what I mean? However, whatever their path was, whether it be the nicest guy in the world in Russell Wilson, or whether it's Richard Sherman, you know, it's the, the attitude was the same. The approach was different, but the attitude was always the same. Right. So that's just another piece of my experience that I'll share with you. Um, like you said, being yourself is important. Don't try to be somebody mm -hmm. that you're not. Because the scouts, when they interview the good ones or the coaches, like the people in the, in the business who will be making the actual decisions, 
they'll look at you and they can tell when your answer is manufactured mm -hmm. or when this ain't what I heard from when I did my research. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So just be yourself, be who you are. I remember sitting in with uh, actually Seattle's D coordinator and Pete Carroll's my coach in college. He left. And it was something that the, the D coordinator mentioned to me and I got on the phone with Pete and I kind of questioned about it. And the D coordinator looked at me like, oh, you wasn't supposed to say that. But it was like, I already have a relationship with him. Um, so he knows if I say something in a certain way, then he knows what it means for me. It's not like I'm, I'm bullshitting or I'm, you know, I'm making some shit up. They know if, if, if that's my approach, it is who I am. So just continue to be yourself, man. Um, it'll be awesome to see. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing about it. Appreciate it. Thank you, man. Yeah, that's all right, right. Cause when you said like, that brought trigger something in my mind, when you said you had to come in in the locker room and somebody got to lose a job if I'm gonna get mine. Yeah. So that's the mindset. Like we never talked about this, have we, Mike? No. Ever nothing. But when I came to Oregon, somebody gonna lose a scholarship. Have to. Cause I need one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need one. Yeah. So one of y'all is coming up off them tickets, right. like straight yeah. up. <laughs> they, they right. coming up off as them much, tickets. As much as I hate the like crabs in a barrel mentality, when it comes to the roster and then when it comes to how I compete, when it yeah. when it's between the lines, we can't. I can't save nothing. Yeah. I can't save nothing. No. We can be as cool as like a fan afterwards, yeah. but I can't save nothing between the lines no. because. I need my respect right. that no, way. I need it's, funny. <laughs> it's funny you brought that up because, like, uh, you know, me being a leader, I literally told people because I see people dogging at practice. I'm like, yo, bro, like, mm -hmm. we come out here, don't dap me up, bro. Like, right. you might, I, you my man's, but we out here, we going to war. Yeah. <laughs> the minute coach blow that whistle, practice over. What's up, man? It's all love, but mm -hmm. like you say, gotta have that mentality. Just go at it every day. Like, I ain't taking it easy on you because mm -hmm. yeah. it's either me or you. Mm -hmm. and it ain't gonna be me. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't gonna be me. <laughs> <laughs>